So someday you're going to want to use this. Oh. So see how that's like union justice and everything. This uh, little room over here mm -hmm. is, hey, Curtis, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. It's called the Keel Center. Keel and it's Center. one of the largest labor archives in the United States. And so they have all kinds of stuff related to labor. Hi. All the kinds of stuff related to labor. Very and, good. And including, like, you know, hats. <laughs> There's one right Other there. kinds of documents. It's a good place to research about speech and persuasion. Yeah. I make in the rhetoric class that you're teaching, they have to go into the Kill Center, mm -hmm. do and some original an research, and um, find an artifact, and then do a paper on it. That's great. Yeah. And luckily, I have a good relationship with the person that um, runs the Kill Center, like the archivist. Yeah. And the, he's like, yeah. yes, I will work with them. The librarians. They're actually very excited. Thank you. Librarians are really awesome people, especially arch archive li archivist librarians. They're great. So you figured out so far that Sam Nelson here knows everyone on the Cornell University <laughs> yes. campus. Yes. Five people said hi to him, and we've only been recording for about a minute and a half. Yeah. So. Well, I'm in the a area where I, where my payment is for <laughs> people to say hi to me. And this is as, as, this is as far as the ankle monitor <laughs> will allow you to travel. But yeah, Sam is like me, he teaches speech. But you've never taught an online speech class, have you? No. Yeah. This is a first for, for a lot of people. I've never done it before. Yeah, it's fun though. Uh, my understanding is it would be quite fun and quite convenient for people. And some people can't really um, take a course any other way mm -mm. because of uh, circumstances in their life or whatever. Yeah. So I think it's the way of the future. The people that are taking online courses now are kind of pioneers in the... Uh, new education i like that i like the idea of pioneers yeah. but do you think what we're doing now is public speaking like we're kind of by ourselves and we're talking to this camera yeah i mean i kind of think it is it is public speaking i guess the if the definition of public speaking involves speaking to a public mm. and doing it out loud i guess it would assume that more than just the people enrolled in the class watch this we're gonna get a coffee now that's what we're yeah. looking for this campus is like kind of big. Yeah, it's very big. I'm like we we haven't even left the ILR school yet, have we? No. The yeah, uh, campus like is really uh, one of the biggest Ivy League campuses. I've heard that you could fit five of the other Ivy League schools into the Cornell campus. Wow, that's pretty cool. So, well, oftentimes they'll compare Cornell to other schools in the Ivy League, and Cornell's numbers are always much larger because the population of Cornell, the number of students that go here, the enrollment is so much bigger than most of the schools. What about 30,000 students maybe? It's a, a less than that. It's like 25,000 25, students. students. Yeah. Hmm. Very good. I think it's 20,000 undergraduates and 5,000 graduates. Interesting thing about Ithaca, New York, where it's located is uh, there's another college here called Ithaca College mm. that also has a lot of students. Not as many as Cornell, but still has a fair number of students. And they have some specialties that they're quite good at. And so um, the, it makes Ithaca, New York, like the prototypical college town. A town of 50,000 where over half of the people that live in the town are between the ages of 18 and 25. Here in the Statler Hotel at Cornell University. And the reason I'm here is to give a talk to Sam's class. Who's Sam also teaches argumentation. He's a lawyer, actually. He teaches speech, argumentation, debate here at Cornell University and has for a very long time. He always invites me up to talk about rhetorical theory to his class. Caffeinated ice, ice coffee? Yeah, ice coffee. coffee. But do you have a little bit more like a frappuccino or something? Yeah, some coffee. Yeah, we can see the baseball stadium here. You can see the baseball game. What size are We're here in the PepsiCo lecture hall where Sam is about to have his debate club meeting. Look how many people are here for this thing. 
Then, after he gets this kicked off, we're going to go eat, and then I'm going to talk about rhetorical theory and rhetoric, the study of how to make meaning out of words, or how to use your words to make things mean, uh, and the history of that, history of rhetoric, rhetorical theory. It's good. I do this uh, twice a year here at Cornell. It always amazes me how many students want to come out and uh, study rhetorical arts, but uh, the reason why is Cornell University gives them a huge amount of support, a huge amount of support, so they have all the resources they need to run it properly. It's really quite a nice thing that they do. Also, Sam gave me this book, which is, bring it out of its protective covering, from like 1697. And it is a rhetoric book. I don't know how well you can see that. But it's an account of declamations and, that's Latin, and tropes and logical arguments in the Aristotelian style. And so if you're taking public speaking in the early modern period or in Europe, 17th century, 16th century, this would be the textbook you'd use. And we use a lot of these ideas today, but nothing like this. This would be a book where you go and it would tell you almost exactly what to say for each argument. And uh, we're a lot less formulaic than they were, but we're still formulaic, but maybe not um, at the same level. Pretty sure there's declamations in there and examples of good declamations and I'm pretty sure there are commonplace lists in there and uh, tropes and maxims so it'll be good. Syracuse at the airport, had a cab driver who was absolutely obsessed with talking about autographs the whole time. He's an interesting guy. He's collected like 200 autographs or something from just anybody famous that he could meet. That was an interesting way to start the day. And I had a great time doing the talk. You saw some clips of it. I'm sure I put them in. I hope I put them in. But uh, yeah, the GoPro isn't good for recording lectures or things like that. It's better for stuff like this, shorter stuff. But uh, anyway, on my way back to New York had a great time up here and uh, looking forward to uh, thinking a bit more about uh, what counts as public speaking for the, uh, the internet. Uh, Sam had some good things to say. I don't know if it was captured on the video, but we had a great conversation about student free speech or free speech in the university and the limits of that, or should there be limits on that, and that was pretty good. But I don't think I caught that on the camera. But great class, great time at Cornell University glad that they had me and uh, now it's time to go and uh, hopefully sleep on the plane so I didn't get back until like 11 30 midnight and then I was up at 5 30 to get the taxi to come here on time so I love it I'll keep doing it so uh, until next time uh, upstate New York <laughs>